Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. How you doing, Mr. Reverend Eric? Uh, this is from the Armor of God series. Uh, it's, it's a classic. It's one of, it's, uh, one of my uh, sermons I've preached. I um, hope you enjoy it. hope you it gain, you gain some insight from it. hope the Lord blesses us all from hearing it. hope you can walk away with some practical as well as spiritually good advice from the Lord on how to understand how the Armor of God works and, more importantly, how it affects us when we're out in the world and having to um, defend our faith as well as as protect those that are that are weak in faith as well. And you have to rely on God and his strength and his beauty. And uh, how to stay under the shepherd's protection and watch the lie. But uh, as as anything else we know from Ephesians, uh, we we don't fight against people's mentalities and and, and things like we we fight on a spiritual level. So in most cases, we do have to cast down people's ideologies and imaginations, but it's, it's their spiritual sin that is that is what's hindering them from wanting to hear the truth. That's the worst part about it. It's their sin that is robbing them of the ability to hear the truth of God. They'll try to listen to human reason and think they can come up with their own ideas, but they don't realize that the majority of the problems that are in their life are self-caused. They are It's a self-destructive nature of sin. Sin consumes, sin kills. That's what it does. So it's, it's forever hungry, it's ravenous, it's never satisfied, and it is on and in every single human being from conception to death. So the only thing that can erode and destroy sin is Jesus Christ. All you have to do is put your faith and your and your trust in him, repent, be baptized, be saved. That's it. There's no other way to combat sin. And, and as, a, as a Christian, as, as we go through our life, whether we're forward or backwards, you know, whether we're we're still struggling in the flesh. We have a, a Savior that's still strengthening us. So we just have to rely on what we're fighting and who we're fighting against. And always understand that we're not fighting against those things that we can touch. We're not fighting physical wars. We're fighting a war that is far greater, far bigger battlefield. We're fighting for people's souls. And that's important. That's important that we that we always remember that that's what we're here for. So I love you very much. I'm talking to you soon. Reverend Eric, UNHD. How you doing? Today's devotion is coming out of Luke 22, 31, and 32. Now, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desire to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and that when thou art covered, converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now we're going to read in 33 and 34. And it said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that not know me. What we're reading about today is very important because our breastplate of righteousness can be strengthened and it can be attacked and weakened by our decision making. As we can see in the text today, we know that Luke will do what? Not Luke, I'm sorry. Peter will do what? Simon Peter will deny Christ three times. Because what? That was a decision that he made. Because he let the word, he saw what was happening to his brothers. He saw what was happening to Christ. He saw what was going on that was got to go on with, with the crucifixion coming. The, on, the onslaught. Can you imagine being surrounded in, in, a, in a lynch mob in a sense? And now they're sitting there. And you could be swept up in that lynch mob. And guess what? You had to make a decision, right? The decision is to what? Die with Christ or stay safe? Well, let's be straight honest. Die with Christ, side with the world. That's what, pretty much what was going on. And for three times he did that. And even though Christ says, I pray that your faith will hold true when you're finally converted. Can you understand the conversion when you're finally willing to pick up your cross and walk with it? When you're finally willing to pick up your cross and walk with God. That's what we're looking for. When you're finally able to hoist that thing on your shoulder and start walking with God is where we're going to start to really see the fruits of our, of our spirit. We're going to see the fruits of our labor. The fruits of what God is asking us to do. The blessing that God is asking us to do. So the breastplate of righteousness, a lot of that is content with what? Our decision making process. We have to be ready and willing to always make the right decisions. 
especially when nobody else is around, because that's when it's most critical. When nobody else is around is where the critical decision-making of being righteous and being morally upright and, and having the conviction to stand in right way of thinking is when all nobody else is around, when everybody's gone. And that's a huge thing. So we have to make sure that we're prepared all the time. I'm holding this thing like a WWE belt, like those superstars do. But you know what it is, my belt. This is what I protect. This is my breastplate. This is what I keep close to my heart, and I keep close to me at all times. Because I do not want to go outside unarmed against a devil in a world that seeks to destroy and hurt me in every way they can. And so I'm telling you today, our decision-making process is under attack every day. And we have to make sure we do better about that. And how do we do better about that? Word of God. Stay closer to your heart. Read it every day, study it every day, and look at our decisions that we're making and see, okay, am I making the right decision for today? And if you actually are questioning if you can make the right decision, you have, you have a manual right there. Not to demean the book. You have a manual to help you get through making a better decision. And the thing, the, the, the passage that starts out at the beginning that I enjoy the most is when it says that, Peter, you've, been, you, you've got the devil. He wants to sift you like wheat. He wants to look through your filing cabinet to say, okay, what, what can I do? To get Peter to stumble. What can I do to get, you know, Eric to, to, to stumble on something? What can I, oh, wait a minute. Fear. Let's put fear of persecution on him. Let's actually put a fear that something, he can lose something worldly. Let's say he loses life. Let's, let's put that in the book. And what does the devil do? He does it successfully every single time. I don't know what your wheat that he served and found it through, but do not let him win. Understand where, you, where you're sitting in the world. Make sure that belt of truth is on you at all times. Understand who you are in Christ. And second is make sure you make right decisions. Isn't that a good word? Right decisions. Righteousness. You see the kind of coalition? I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, this is Reverend Eric. Remember, donate to the ministry. If you believe in what we're doing, please support us. This is Reverend Eric. And also, don't forget, we have an app in the App Store right now. UNHD, the, the official app is in there. So be kind. It's, it's not a lot in there, but we're, we're growing as we're doing it. So in Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Reverend Eric. We're talking about righteousness. We're coming to the closing, closing bell of righteousness. Um, at least in the Bill Armor of God series. Righteousness will never be over with, so we still got to go forward. We're going to be reading out of Luke 19, 45 and 46. We're going to see Jesus acts on righteousness, which is what we should be doing, which is acting on righteousness. We can read, it says, And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, just wanted to illustrate in this text that you see when Jesus Christ saw something, saw something happening that was not supposed to happen, he acted on it. That is how God, when, he, when God is right, God is a righteous, righteous man. He, not really man in the sense, physical sense, but God is righteous. He, one of his strongest attributes, besides love and justice, if we can pick many of them, is righteousness. And when, when it writes, when he sees something that is threatened, something that is threatening what is good and what is just, God acts on it. When we are being uh, unfairly persecuted, when we're being uh, thrown, on, on, thrown into the proverbial bus, what does God do? He acts on it. When he sees one of his children harmed and being harmed by evil, what does he do? He acts on it. Whenever his church is under fire and, and, it, and it needs to be pulled out so that it can, so it can be healed and, and, and ready, what does he do? He acts on it. Whenever there's an injustice, God acts. So then why is it that we do not? Isn't that amazing? That we have the same righteousness that God does through Jesus Christ now. But yet we don't have the same motivation to go into a place and turn over a table when you see some injustice happen. They took prayer out of school and we acted that much. Well, what are we going to do when they take prayer out the, out, out the of American, uh, the American way of life? We're going to act, what, that much? We're more concerned about church numbers than living on God's divine law. His law is still in place. And that causes some righteousness to about to build up and say, this is enough. Enough. I can't take no more. we got to do something about it. A lot of this ministry is based on, we got to do something about it. We, we, preach, we hear things preached that should not be preached. We see things on TV that should not be seen. We, we see our, our, our children going through things that they should not go through. And what do we do? Nothing. Well, we got to do something. Righteousness is also an, is, it can, can spur you to action to do the right thing. To get out there and say, look, this is enough enough. We've got to do something different. So why is it that it is so easy for us Christians to stand by and let these things happen? Laziness. 
that that righteousness is not yet fully fulfilled in us. Some of us have not even asked God, God, make me more righteous than I, than I know what I need to be. Some of us get to a point to where we're thinking, you know what, I'm justified enough. Had a conversation of, uh, with, 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 a, with, a young, with a young person. Oh, I, I've already been chastened by God. I've already got that. I've already done with that already. I'm, I'm through. I'm finished. When did your chasing, when did you decide your chasing was over? Did you really think that you know when God says, okay, you've had enough of your chasing and now we can move forward? That chasing that probably has not even begun to finish its cycle yet. But we can get so wrapped up in thinking that we know God's will, yet we're still on our knees praying for things that we don't even know how to pray for. Because we've not sought Him diligently enough. Now, I'm not saying that I have. But I definitely can tell you one thing. We need to do something different. And that different is to go forward with righteousness. So how do we become more righteous? How do we become more righteous? We walk in the same walk as Christ. That's how we become more righteous. We start to stand up for things that, that when the Holy Spirit says, Eric, you need to say something about this, then we say something. Eric, you need to stand in the gap for this. Then we stand in the gap for it. There is no, well, you know what, God, I really don't have time for it today because, you know, woof, I got things to do. I got a car to wash. I got these kids to get up. No, 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 no. Righteousness demands action, not laziness. Because when you allow, let me tell you something. Laziness is a mark of the enemy. The enemy is the one that's telling you, you know what, don't worry about it. I understand, just, just love me and, and go about your day. Does that sound like God? God is a man of action. He says, hey, I need you to do something. I need you to cross this river. I need you to go across that street. I need you to go to your job and I need you to preach this word. He did not say, hey, you know, just, why don't you just take a seat and lay down. You know, kick your feet back. I'm God. I handle all of it. No, we are workers with him and, and through this process. We are authors together, man. He wants us to walk with him. He doesn't want to carry us no more. He doesn't want to lead us around by the hand so we can't learn as much as we use. He needs to teach us what it's like to walk in righteousness. Well, how do we do that? We got to walk. We got to stand up for what's right, and we got to be—we have to trust in the Holy Spirit to guide us when that when that righteousness is in our face, and we have to do something about it. That is the key to walking in righteousness, and we can walk in righteousness. Guess what we can do? We can put on that breastplate. You know, the breastplate of righteousness, and we can start to hold up to it and take those bullets and take them arrows that the enemy is throwing. But more importantly, more importantly, we can stand in the gap for others so they don't have to get hit. One of the greatest gifts of righteousness is the ability to take the hits of someone else that may not be strong enough to handle it for themselves. Standing up for the little man. You know, talk about, we always talk, you hear stuff about, about anti bullying. Well, guess what? Christians are stand for anti-bullying more than anything else. Because when somebody else is getting harmed and bullied, guess who stands up? Christians do. This is Reverend Eric on Righteousness. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.